let me speak my message to you. I've been talking to you about how God comes near to us like the rain, or particularly the winter rains. And with regard to this, last week, nagtudluko ka ninyo about God and the seasons of rain. And in that study, we've learned the following. Una sa tanan, God is the one who sends the Yori rain, and that is the autumn or the latter rain, and the Malkush rain, that is the former rain or the spring rain. And the lesson that we have learned is that the Lord is the source and the cause of these two important rains. And we should be open to this. We are to pray for rain in the season of rain. And we are to expect God to pour more of these showers on us. And secondly, we are to yield ourselves to the Yore rain. The latter and the autumn rain. And remember the Yore rain in Israel comes around the Feast of Sukkot. Around September or it could be really October. But it can go, the waiting period can go as far as November. So the ancient farmer would wait for this rain before he ever plants the grain into his plowed ground. What he would do around Sukkot is that he would what? Plow the ground, plow the unplowed ground, the dry, hard uh, ground, and leave it for a while waiting for the rain to come. The, fur, the, the that shower that comes after Sukkot. And he may wait until about November. So he has that patience uh, to wait. But his waiting will pay off, pay off rather. Why? Because the rain will surely come. And I taught you that we are to have the patience of a farmer. As um, James or Peter told us that we need to what? Be ready for the rain as the farmer or wait for the rain as the farmer waits for, patiently waits for the what? Former and the latter rain. And this will actually cause righteousness to abound, the Yuri rain, both in the lives of the people of God who are slumbering in sin, katumangan na, na, na tulog, they will be awakened in righteousness. And then eventually the sinful world, because the moment revive among Christoanun, then they will go out and share the gospel, and there will be a great awakening happening in the world. Now, kita nagadawat sa aning ulan. We need to really, or nagulata sa aning ulan. We need to plow our ground, make it uh, ready. For the moving of the Holy Spirit, prepare the ground. Look at somebody and say, prepare your ground. So that the rain can penetrate into our hearts. And this can only happen when we seek God. Pag ato siyang pangitaon, this yuri rain will come. And we will encounter the presence of God and the Lord will come to us. Now tonight... I want to have a part two of this study. It's still God and the seasons of rain, part two. Ano may part two na kabutang? Joel chapter 2, 23 to 24. Let me read this from the NIV. Be glad, O people of Zion, rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given you the autumn rains in righteousness, autumn rains in righteousness, that's the your rain. So it's always connected to righteousness. He sends you abundant showers, both autumn and spring rains as before. The threshing floors will be filled with grain. The vats will overflow with new wine and oil. Let's pray. Father God, in Jesus' name, we are thankful for this opportunity that we can again dig into your word and teach us, God. Because at the time of your reign, we are being educated. The time of teaching, teach us about this so that we will not commit mistakes as far as this reign is concerned. 
We are ready, Lord God, for the planting of your word. And I pray your anointing will flow as I teach the people. And I pray you, <clears throat> you will use me under your power and authority and clarity of words. In the name of Jesus, in Tanan Magsulte Og, Amen. Now, one great truth that we have always known from the Bible is that God, or our God, is known to come down on his weary inheritance like the showers of rain. This is something that we know from the Bible. Our God is always known to what? Come down on his weary inheritance like the showers of rain. Psalm 72 verse 6, New King James Version says, He shall come down like rain upon the grass before mowing like showers that water the earth. He shall come down like what? Rain. So again, this gives us a picture of God doing a refreshing work. He wants his weary inheritance to be what? To be refreshed. And that word refresh means to be strong, right? And we can see this clearly in Psalm 68 verse 9. The psalmist says, You gave abundant showers, O God. You refreshed your weary inheritance or your weary possession. So what do we see here? God is always concerned with the status of his people. God is not referring to the land here physically, but he is, he is referring to his people. Concerned kanunay ang atong ginoo sa estado nato. Okay? Uh, as his very own. He does not want us to be wary. Ayun yang kita mga uh, uh, luya sa iyaha. We already have looked at the meaning of this wary a couple of uh, weeks ago or Fridays ago. It means to be tired. It means to be exhausted or to be disgusted or to be disappointed. Now, when we are tired and we are exhausted, sabi natin fainting in life, ang ihina, God is very much concerned with that. The will of God is for His people to be always at the top, never at the bottom. Kapag uh, nahuyang ta or laluya ta, where do we find ourselves? Down at the bottom, never at the, at the, at the top. So when He sees weariness, because He is a loving God, and He is our kinsman, Redeemer, he will come down like shower on the grass. He wants his people to be strong again. Look at five people and say, he wants you to be strong again. He wants you to be strong again. Five people, din lang usaha. He wants to make us strong again. And he will want to take out the weaknesses in our lives. I believe right now, globally, this is the condition of the church. We are in such a condition, the entire church of Jesus Christ, the universal church of the Lord. The church globally has been wearied and tired. Some even have become disgusted over the situations of the world. Because of what? Again, because of the pandemic. So therefore, we can really expect God to come down near us at this season. Ayaw, na, ayaw sa Lord na kita magpadayon sa atong pagkaluya. He wants us to be strong. He wants us to be refreshed again so, God, so that we can do the will of God. Ma-accomplish na ito ang mga tumong sa atong Diyos. Right? Look at somebody and say, God has a purpose for your life. And when you are weak, you cannot accomplish it. You need to be strong. That's why Jesus said to his disciples before he left for heaven, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of my Father from heaven until you are clothed with power from on high. 
And then when you get zapped by the Spirit, you can now go and preach the gospel. Right? Look at your neighbor and say, you need the Holy Spirit. You need the Holy Spirit. We all need the Holy Spirit, right? And He comes to us in a different way. And one of the ways that He comes to us is like rain, like showers from heaven. Is everybody here? Now, with regards to rain, I want us to look at two major uh, terms for rain in the Bible. There are two major terms for rain in, uh, on the, uh, in, in the Bible, not on the Bible, but in the Bible. The first is Geshem. We have uh, talked about this. We have seen this before. This is the modern general term for rain. Right now, modern Hebrew, kapag umuulan, they will call it Geshem. And in the agricultural use of the, world, the word, in ancient time, this refers to what? The natural rain. Say natural rain. natural rain. This is the rain that comes from the ocean and eventually falls on the earth. Its source is the evaporation of water on the earth, particularly the oceans. And until it accumulates right there in the heavens above and then falls on the ground. This is more like a normal daily rain that we receive. And then, uh, nakita po natin, pinag-aralan natin, that this word is related to this word, lehit gashem. Lehit gashem. And gashem is found in the word gashem. It's just a matter of pronouncing it in Hebrew, pero it's the same word, it's the same spelling. Lehit gashem. It means what? The rain that causes the seed to sprout from the ground. You don't see... The, the, the grain or the seed, and then suddenly, because of the rain, the seed sprout out from the ground. So that thing, wala, things, uh, the, the, there were none, but suddenly, because of the rain, uh, the seed grows. So it is the rain that, what? Brings in a miraculous growth. Say, a miraculous growth. It takes a miracle to uh, cause the plants and vegetable, uh, vegetations and trees to grow, right? How many of you know the poem, The Tree? Kalimutan uh, but the end is only God can make a tree, right? Hosea 6, 3, let us know let us pursue the knowledge of the Lord. His going forth is established as the morning. He will come to us like the rain. The Hebrew word is Geshem. Like the latter Yore and the former rain, Malkush, to the earth. So he will come to us like the rain. The showers that comes from heaven. The natural rain. God is the source also of natural rain. But there is a second word for rain, and it's the word matar. In ancient time, mas tinatawag nila ang rain as matar. Matar, as uh, the Hebrew say, sages uh, said, that this is the rain of blessing. Say, the rain of blessing. They call Matar as a rain of blessing. It is a rain or the rain directly associated with God. For they said that this rain directly comes from heaven itself. God sends this rain directly uh, from heaven. One online commentary that I read as I was studying this a particular rain says the Hebrew meaning would be a type of rain which is perhaps more directly or intentional caused by God than normal everyday rain. So 
this would be a type of rain which is perhaps more directly or intentionally caused by God than normal everyday rain. Deuteronomy 11, 13 to 15. So if you faithfully obey the commands I'm giving you today, to love the Lord your God and to serve Him with all your heart and with all your soul, then what? Then I, God said, I will send you the matar, not Geshem, I will send you rain, the matar on your land in its season, both autumn and spring rains, so that you may gather in <clears throat> your grain, new wine and oil, or you can have your harvest. I will provide gr grass in the fields of, for your cattle, and you will eat <clears throat> and be satisfied. So, tanawa how matar is sent by God. I will send matar. Let's see other scriptures. First Samuel chapter 12, verse, verse 18. So Samuel called unto the Lord, and the Lord sent thunder and what? <clears throat> thunder and rain. That rain is matar. Sent that day, all the people greatly feared the Lord, and Samuel so on. You, uh, this is from the King James Version. Deuteronomy 28, 12. King James again, the Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure, the heaven to give you what? Rain, matar, unto thy land in his season, and to bless all the work of thine hand, and thou shalt lend in unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. But God is the one who sends this rain of blessings and will create prosperity in our lives. So that what? We will be the lender and not the borrower. Look at somebody and say, you need this rain of blessing. Amen. Deuteronomy 11, 16 to 17. So what we see here is that God can also cause this rain not to come. 16. Take heed to yourselves that your heart be not deceived. <clears throat> and ye turn aside and serve other gods and worship them. And the Lord's uh, wrath will be kindled against you. And he shut up the heavens that what? There be no matar. And that the land yield uh, not their fruits. And lest ye perish quickly off the ground or the good land which the Lord giveth you. So... God is the one who is in charge of the matar. And says he, this is directly from him. <clears throat> he can what? Withhold the rain. And when there is no rain, the land will be cursed. So this is the rain of blessing. Likewise, with regards to Sodom and Gomorrah, God referred to the raining of the soul for us, matar down these two cities and other, other cities. Genesis 19, 24 to 25. Then the Lord rained down Matar, uh, burning sulfur on Sodom and Gomorrah from the Lord out of the heavens. So Matar can be a reign of judgment. If the people will continue with their evil practices, some as a Sodom and Gomorrah. Instead, the reign of blessing is a reign of judgment. But the source is always God. Look at your neighbor and say, the source is always God. The source of Matar. So we have seen the differences between these two words for rain. Nonetheless, still God is the cause of these two major rains. He gives us the natural rain or our field, and gives us what? This spiritual rain, this matar, this uh, rain of blessing directly from heaven. Is everybody here? There are a lot of differences in, in the law. God is still the cause of this. We need Geshem and we need matar, right? Walang Geshem, awala tayong kainin. There will nothing be sprouting from the ground. 
right? If we are tithers and we uh, bring our offerings to God, God will rain down His showers on us and He will rain matar on us, the rain of blessings. And everybody said, So pag nagkamputa sa atong ginoo, Lord, send us both the Geshem and the matar. We want to be blessed. But there are other words that are used for rain in the Bible. Kaya lang hindi ito has the two major rains. Let me give you four uh, different types of rain or descriptions of rain. First is ribibim, which means abundant showers. And it comes from the root rabab. And it, come, it means to become many or much. So abundant showers, ribibim. Ribibim can refer to what the yore and the malkush rain. The laugh is uh, the next one. This is water dropping, water dropping in a continuous flow. And you will be amazed where God used this, or Solomon used this. Proverbs 27, 15. A quarrelsome wife is like a the laugh on a rainy day, constant dripping. Karon na kayo constant dripping sa bahay kasi butas, uh, na butas man ang sin ninyo sa taas, iba, tuk, tuk, tuk. It's annoying, it's irritating, right? And another one is sa rear. It's also found in Proverbs 27, 15. It means a steady or persistent rain. Again, Psalm 27, 15, a quarrelsome wife is what? Like a, the laugh on a rainy or sagrir rain, when there is a steady, persistent rain. Tuloy-tuloy yung ulan. Another type of rain is sarsif. Sarsif means a drop or dripping. A rain that actually waters the earth. And there are three Hebrew words for rain that we see here in this verse, Psalm 72, verse 6. He shall come like matar upon the grass before mowing, like ribibim. What is ribibim? Abundant showers that what? Sarsif the earth. That waters the earth. The young, Young's literal translation, somehow it, it got it well. He cometh down as rain, matar on mown grass, a showers ribibim, sprinkling zarsif the earth. So you see how rain comes down. It can be matar, it can be geshem, it can be the two major rains, but ito po yung descriptions of how the rain can come. Okay, claro? You get it? So you can say, Lord, pour out your ribibim, your matar, pour it like ribibim, abundant showers on me, and sprinkle on me your water. Now, however, there is one important thing that we must learn here. <clears throat> the rain comes depending on our relationship with God. The rain will come depending on our relationship with God. I want you to take, the no 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 take uh, note of the words of Moses in Deuteronomy again. Deuteronomy 11, 10 to 15. God says, the land you are entering to take over is not like the land of Egypt, from which you have come, where you planted your seed and irrigated it by foot as in a vegetable garden, because they always have the Nile 24-7 as a source of water. Verse 11, but the land you are crossing the Jordan to take possession of is a land of what? Mountains and valleys that drink Rain, matar, from where? Heaven. So the rain, will be the, uh, the rain will be the source of what? Of water for you. 
It is a land, verse 12, the Lord your God cares for. The eyes of the Lord your God are continually on it from the beginning of the year to its end. 13, if you faithfully obey the commands I am giving you today to love the Lord your God and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul, then I will send Matar on your land in its season, both autumn and spring rain, so that you may gather in your grain, new wine and oil. I will provide grass in the fields for your cattle, and you will eat and be satisfied. So here, God will bring Israel to the land of Canaan, composed basically of mountains and valleys and hills, if you've not been in, 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 into Israel yet, well, it's not like uh, dito sa downtown area na flat. It's always it's hilly and mountainous and it has valleys. So God brought them to a land where there is no natural source of water unlike they were in Egypt. The land is dependent on the falling of Matar from God. Not the phrase that the land drinks rain from heaven, matar. So where does matar comes from? Asagi ka na matar. Say from heaven. Say that again. And the point here is God will send matar depending on the people's faithfulness. To obey his commands and to love him and to serve him with all their, their hearts. Kung magpadayon sila sa ilang uh, uh, relationships sa Lord, sa ilang faithfulness, God assures, assures them of the coming of this rain. Both the autumn and the spring rains, the rain will come. It will not fail as long as they trust the Lord, they love the Lord, and serve the Lord. And if ever they turn away from Him, the rain will not come. It will fail to come. Here's another verse, Deuteronomy 28, 12. Deuteronomy 28, we know, is a chapter that talks about God's blessings and God's curses. Verse 12 says, The Lord will open, ESB, to you His good treasury, the heavens to give the matar to your land in its season, and to bless all the work of your hands. And you shall, what? Lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. So this verse is part of the blessings of obeying God. How many of you read Deuteronomy 28? 28. And it's divided into blessings and curses. And mas madami ang curses kaysa sa blessing. So God will open unto the people. This is the blessing. His good treasury giving them rain on their land eh, on its season. So they got to be dependent on God because He's the only one who sends the matar. Now, now we apply na to sa atong kaugalingon so ating mga spiritual walk with God. This is very much true in the way we walk with God. The reign of God which is the Holy Spirit, will come upon us always if we are faithful to Him. The more we love God, the more we serve Him, the more these showers will come always. Whenever this rain comes on us, the spiritual rain, the spiritual matar, there will be blessings. That's a revival. Whenever you study revival, those who open themselves to the revival, there is prosperity that comes around. Are you here? Look at somebody and say, God will prosper you. But if ever they turn away from God, God will likewise, what? Shut up the heavens. will turn away the rain from our lives and we will become dry. As God did it to the land of Israel, He will do it to us. Are you here? That's why there are Christians who are so dried up, because they never walk close with God. 
There are churches, a whole church that is so dry, no moving of the Spirit. Why? Because they are not living in conformity to the will of God. Programs long and so on. We need God more than anything in everybody said. Say, love God and serve Him. Now, here's another passage that we have to see with regard to this truth. You already have uh, known this. I have used this verse many times, Hosea chapter 6. But i like us to start with verse 1, up to verse 3. Come, let us return to the Lord, for He has torn, but He will heal us. He has stricken, but He will bind us up. After two days, He will revive us. On the third day, He will raise us up that we may live in his presence. Verse 3, let us know, let us pursue the knowledge of God. He is going forth, establish as morning. He will come to us like the rain. Geshem naman, natural rain, like the latter yore and former rain, Malkosh, to the earth. So here, Hosea is telling the readers to return to God. Though God has torn them, he will heal them. Though they have been stricken, they will, uh, he will bind them up. And when they do this, God will revive them. After two days, he will revive us. On the third day, we will live in his presence. So God will send the rain, both the latter and the former rains. And what is interesting here is the, uh, the words like the water and the former rains. Like, I'm sorry, like the latter and the former rain. Don't uh, change it. Uh, don't change it, Sabiko. Don't change it. Change it. Magstayan. Uh, like the latter, your ray and former uh, rain, Malkosh to the earth. There's something I want you to note, sa Hebrew. Yung word na end, A-N-D, does not appear in Hebrew. I consulted the Hebrew Bible and looked at this. Like the latter, wala yung in, the latter, former rain to the earth. So it says that God will give your rain, Malkos rain. Instead of adding the word N, it should be hyphen. Dapat nakadash lang siya. It should be what? Your rain, Malkos rain. I will send you your rain, Dash Marcos rain. Meaning to say God will send them both together as one. As one rain. Say as one rain. You see, walang division sa Hebrew. Wala yung sending you the latter and the former rain. Wala tong end. So I will send you latter and former rain. Or latter former rain. Hyphen lang, dash lang. So, the, the two seasons of rain can come down as one when God wants it. God can send both rain together as one. Are you here? I believe this is a shower that we can expect to happen in the end of days, in the last days. God will send both these rains on the church on the earth before Jesus Christ comes back. Now let's go to Jeremiah and let's see how the lives of the people can stop the rain from uh, stop the rain from coming down because God will be the one to shut it. Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 1, second half up to verse 3. Christian Standard Bible says, But you, you have prostituted, prostituted yourself with many part partners, can you return to me? This is the Lord's declaration, or thus said the Lord. Look to the barren heights and see. Where have you, uh, where have you not been Im immoral? You sat wait waiting for them beside the highways like a nomad in the desert. You defiled the land with your prostitution and wickedness. In verse 3, this is why the showers have, haven't come. Why there has been no spring rain, no yore rain. 
you have the brazen look of a prostitute and refuse to be ashamed. Jeremiah 5.24, it is implied here. They do not say to themselves, they have forget, gotten to say this, let's fear the Lord our God who gives us the autumn and spring rains in season, who assures us of, a, of the regular weeks of harvest. They are not uh, calling on one another, encouraging one another to fear the Lord. So he's saying that the spiritual condition of Judah have, uh, has changed. And they are no longer encouraging one another, fear the Lord, because he is the source of all this rain. Kaya wala silang ulan. So what is significant here is how God is the one who gives us both the autumn and the spring rains. And they are all dependent on their relationship with God. Say relationship with God. But I want you to see something here in Jeremiah 5.24. Who gives uh, rain or who gives autumn and spring rains in season. I want you to look at the word in season. Actually in Hebrew, it does not mean in season. It means in his season. Say his season. Let me teach you a little, a little Hebrew. His season in Hebrew is beito. Okay. That's it, beito. Can you say beito? And there are three words joined in together in this short word. Be, that word, the first letter that you see, is so right. Be in Hebrew is in. Et is uh, time or season. And then O is a pronoun, which means his. So be it to, it means in his time or in his season. Who is the source then of all the rain? God. Right? He's the one in control. And God determines the seasons of the rain. Are you here? He determines the seasons of uh, the rain in our lives. He gives us showers in, not in its season or in season, but in his season. Say, in his season. So he determines it. There is a God who determines the showers for our lives. Kahit in the natural is not yet the season. God can send the rain on us or the two rains. Are you here? So sa atin, we can receive both rains. And God is the one who determines the season. Just like right now, I believe this is... Uh, the season wherein God is sending us the showers again. God is moving in a mighty way. Hello, in the world, there are already uh, showers coming upon the earth. And kita uh, diri, we are already experiencing it on, uh, in the Friday service. But we want this to be strong. Let's cry out, God, if this is your season to send rain, send us both. And it can happen individually. Say individually. If we fear God and if we respect Him, we serve Him, then God will send what? The Yore and the Malkush rains upon us in His season. In God's season. There are season for everything. Season for rain. And God determines the season. Are you here? So parati tayong lalapit sa kanya. We don't know when the rain will come. But God is the, only, is the only person who will always determine it. Now let's cry out to the Lord. And I believe we are in the season of, yes, the Yore rain. The rain is starting to fall. But we need to have the Malkush rain. Very strong rain. The Malkush rain uh, is stronger than this rain. And I will talk more about this next week. So we can understand the showers of God. 
I have not thought about this, this uh, new revelation from God. But we need to receive this rain, these showers. How many of you are ready to receive the showers tonight to be watered again? We need the rain every time. How many of you had experienced some sort of weariness lately within this week? You know, we have gone to a lot of difficulties and problems and conflicts. Things were not good this week. Or you have been tired with your studies and so on. Receive the showers from God. And everybody said, look at somebody and say, receive the showers of God. Amen. Amen. God will not hesitate to pour the rain if we want it, if we understand it. So we'll send what? The Geshem, the Matar, during what? Yore and Malkush. And God can send them both in our lives. Hallelujah. Let's all stand up. Let's all stand up. Lift up your hands unto the Lord right now. Lift up your hands. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Yalsa natot at mga kamot sa ginoo. Hallelujah. Ko ravayashin. Let's just pray in tongues, everybody. O ravayashi ke riyasan diyashi. O ravayashi ka davayashi ka niyasan da. Oh, Rabbi Yashi, the Yasanda. Speak in tongues. If you've never been baptized in the Holy Spirit, you can receive it right now. In the name of Jesus, be filled, be saturated. Oh, Rabbi Yasanda, Yasika. Let the rain come, Lord God. Oh, Rabbi Yalaka, Rabbi Yasandi. Ishiki, Rabbi Yasandi, Yasandi. Oh, Rabaya Shika Rabaya Sandia Sandi. Oh, Rabaya Sika Rabaya Sandia Shia. Oh, Rabaya Sika Rabaya Sandia. Oh, Rabaya Sandi Kira by a sea. Go Rabaya Sikiria by a sedia. Oh, Rabaya Sandia Sanda. Join us, those of you are watching online. O Rabala ya seke ya sandia O Raba ya seke ya sandia si O Raba ya seke ya sanda Halalaba ya sanda get ready the rain will come God will send the rain on you right now Lord we are open I know the clouds are heavy with rain right now I pray Lord God that you will what Break open the heavens. Let the showers come down, Lord. Let it fall on us right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, send us the spiritual matar right now in the name of Jesus. The rain that comes from you, both the Yore and the Malkush rain. Let it fall down on us, O oh God. Oh, Rabbi Yasanda, Yasanda. Get ready, it's falling. Oh, there is already a trickle tonight. It's coming. Oh, Rabbi Yasanda. It's coming hard. Oh, Rabbi Lava Yasir, Rabbi Yasir. Oh, Rabbi Yasir, Lava Yasir. Oh, Rabbi Yasir, Yasanda. Yay! Rain, rain! Hallelujah. Pour out your spirit, Lord. 
Pour out your rain. Your heavy rain. Hallelujah. Come on. Be filled with God. Be touched with God once again. Oh, Rabbi Yassi, Rabbi Yassi. 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 Pour out your spirit, Lord God. Oh, thank you, Lord. Send out your showers. Oh, Rabbi Yassin. Lord, we love for more. We pray. We love for more. Hallelujah. We love for Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, ibu puni mo Lord God ang puso na ulan na damo karon gabi. Hallelujah.
revival is here. Reach out to God. Reach out to God.
Pastors move again. Lahat ng pastors, can you move again? Pray for everyone. Lay hands again on everyone. All the pastors, all the pastors once again. Oh, Rabbi Asan, Asan. Minister to our people. Let them receive a touch. Once again, the Rabbi more of you God more of your fire more of your wind more of your rain oh God let it be a storm in this place Yes. 